All right, welcome back. My name is Emery, welcome to the channel. This is a follow-up video to the one I just posted about my November elk hunt here in Washington State. It was very cold out, it was early November. So this is a what was in my pack because this is kind of happening a few, basically a month later. Um, this is everything that I brought with, so I will not go into a ton of detail, but I'll just kind of show you all the things, how I had my stuff set up. So. Let's start with the easy stuff and go from there. I used an Exo Mountain Gear 3500. This is a pack from a few years ago, so they don't make this color anymore. And there have been some updates since this time, but 3500 from Exo Mountain Gear, that was what I was hauling all of my stuff in. This is the Seek Outside Cimarron with carbon fiber tent poles. Uh, this one has bug netting. I have kind of decided I don't really like the bug netting. I'd rather just have a sleek shelter. I haven't had a need for the bug netting. But yeah, Seek Outside, Cimarron, tons of room for me. I was able to actually roll a stump into the tent, use that as like a little cooking area or sitting area, and it really doesn't weigh too much. So it's kind of a luxury. I knew I was gonna be spending a lot of time in the tent. So I backpacked in, dropped my stuff. It was kind of like a base camp and it was dark for like 12 hours a night. I carried steaks in this Kuyu dry zip bag and some extra lashing. That is about the extent of it. So that was all part of my shelter system. All right, so from the ground up, I start with Tyvek. Tyvek is waterproof. It's really cheap. You can get it in a roll for like $30 and have endless amount of ground sheets. There's a lot of dual purposes for this. It's lightweight and it actually is very warm. So I've actually bundled myself up in it when it's raining and use it as kind of like a waterproof shelter shell type thing. And it comes in really handy and it's just really cheap. This is my sleeping pad. This is a Climate Static V. I used this on the Pacific Crest Trail in 2017 and it actually became one of my favorite uh, sleeping pads. This is a 27 degree bag from Sierra Designs called the Mobile Mummy. It is a mummy bag that has a bit of a cool feature to it. It's a center zip and you can push your arms out the side through these baffles. So the mummy portion of it doesn't really make you feel claustrophobic. However, you can't get this bag anymore, at least on retail at their website. You'd have to find it somewhere else because I believe it is discontinued, but it is no doubt one of my favorite bags ever. This is my cook pot. This is a Jetboil Flash. It's a one liter pot. And I like to keep, when I'm going backpacking, I like to keep it connected. So if anyone, ha if anyone knows that's a bad idea, I haven't found it to be a bad idea, no gas leaking, nothing like that. But it makes it really slick when you get to camp and you don't want to twist anything on. You just drop it in and I keep a washcloth in there and that's my cook pot. I don't bring a coffee mug anymore, I just drink coffee out of this guy. Next up in my bag is a set of Kuyu game bags inside a Sea to Summit dry bag just to keep everything dry and there is a set of gloves in here and a knife. So this is kind of like a kill kit. I like to keep this in my bag as well. This is just kind of miscellaneous bag. So it keeps everything that I'm not using during the day and I'm gonna use at night. So in here I have uh, wool socks that are a little bit thicker for the night. So these help to keep me warm. I have a Sea to Summit pillow. Awesome. And this is my kind of electronics bag. And in here is a power bank from Core Third or something like that and various charging cables for my phone. So I keep everything in a waterproof pouch. Inside this little ditty bag, that just kind of goes to the bottom of my bag or the middle of my bag. And that is that. Oh, on top of that, this is my food bag. This is just a simple Ace Camp roll top bag that I stuff all of my food into and I kind of layer it. So I separate dinners, breakfasts, and lunches, and snacks, and stuff like that. It just kind of goes in here. I roll it down, toss it in my bag. So that is the food bag. The food that I'm gonna eat during the day goes into a separate Kefaro pullouts. This is all the food that I'm gonna eat during the day, so I take my snacks and food out of the food bag and put them in here, and I just toss this on the top of the pack, and I eat out of this for the day. Next, I have another Kuyu dry zip bag. So I have some wipes, um, some fire starters, some tent repair, hand sanitizer, Luco tape for blisters, comes in handy. 
You definitely need that. I have a hygiene bag and in here I have toothbrush and toothpaste and these guys. If you don't know what these are, these are incredible. These are Colgate Twisps or Wisps or something. So cool, you can toss a bunch of them in there and they're just like daily toothbrushes. I always keep one in my pocket and brush my teeth throughout the day and that works really well. I have a Gerber Dime. This thing is awesome. This has pliers and it's got a little knife, a bottle opener, which clearly I don't need, but it's also, it's also got scissors on it as well. So there's a little knife there. And this is how you have a set of scissors. This is a Gerber Dime, friggin' incredible. Super tiny. I hiked the entire PCT with something like this. I had another version and it was awesome. I swapped this out because I wanted to be able to get stuff. Ibuprofen and some of their fire starters. So this all goes into one bag and it goes on the outside of my pack or somewhere I can get to it very quickly since it has a lot of important stuff in it. Let's go into water systems. After my through hike in 2017, I switched to smart water bottles. This is one liter, this is one liter. I have a dirty bottle and a clean bottle and this is the micro squeeze. So it's a little bit smaller than the squeeze and kind of around the same size as the mini, but it has much better flow. In my film, I want you to just take note, it did get really cold and one morning, woke up and my water bottle was fully frozen through. And there's an image of this being screwed onto the top. I took that image after having been sleeping with this in my bag at night. So these cannot freeze. If they freeze, they will be damaged. So what you do is you just pull it off, stick it in your sleeping bag and you're good to go. So that's my main water, again, clean and dirty. To go along with that, I brought two platypus extra bladders. These are two liter bladders, so I had total six liters that I could bring with me. And I have this sport cap to back flush my filter with. This is a Petzl Tika RXP. I have no idea if they make this anymore, but it is rechargeable via USB, and it has some interesting modes on it. So if you're looking down, it dims the light. If you're looking up, it brightens it up, so it kind of manages the power on your headlamp. This is a little hatchet, Grand Forest Brooks. This thing is super cool. Anytime I'm hunting or gonna be staying at camp and like building fires and stuff, I've actually switched to this. This weighs, I think, one pound. I did a ton of research on the benefits of like a larger knife that you can kind of cut wood with and a hand axe. And this thing is incredible. I love this thing. It goes with me a lot of places, but I will not go with me on any sort of through hike. It's just too heavy. This guy, Benchmade knife, no idea, I can't recall what it's called, but that was for if I had I got something down, a little bit sturdier knife to pry and do that kind of thing with. This is just, you know, more brush. I brought this UltraPod grip. This thing is super cool and it is wicked light and that's how I was able to film those shots of me doing things. I brought this tripod. This is a Mifoto Q0 model tripod. I was gonna do some glassing and I didn't ever use it. So this was a waste of weight. Where I'm at, I don't really do a whole lot of glassing. I'm kind of in the trees anyhow, so tripods are not a necessity, at least for me. These are Lakey trekking poles, cork light with a speed lock. Uh, deals. I've done a review on these before. These were in my bag. One last bit of gear, my seat pad. Insulates your, your, your backside from the cold ground and anything wet. So it's a must have. For binos, I have Vortex Razor 8x42. Super cool. I also had another bench name made knife on the pocket here. Some wind check. And this is a Kuyu bino bag. The jury's out on whether I like this or not. Super slick. It works pretty well. But I don't like that you can't take the binos out by themselves without it kind of coming off. Let's go into layers real fast and wrap this puppy up. Base layer, these are Icebreaker 260 weight Merino leggings. I wore them all the time, wore them to bed, and I wore all of these layers to bed to warm up my sleeping bag because it is almost a 30 degree bag, and I was warm. The socks I wore were just an average pair of Merino wool socks for hiking. Nothing like that, just one pair of socks and the backup pair that I had for sleeping in that I would toss over my feet at night to keep warm. Prana Stretch Zion, very popular pants and really durable and fairly cheap. 
On my skin, I had a icebreaker merino t-shirt and then I had this Kuyu merino hoodie, uh, nice deep chest zip, thumb holes, and this is what I wore every single day. On top of that, this is the Kuyu, I think it's a Peloton hoodie, but it's like a full zip. And it's kind of like a soft shell jacket that has some gritting on the outside of the fabric that you wouldn't be able to see right now. But it's got hand pockets, a hood, and it zips all the way up. And this thing, this in combination with that, that uh, merino top, man, I was super toasty. So if I was moving really slow through the trees, I was using this. With the merino, if I was just hiking straight in, I was just wearing the merino. And if I was glassing, I'd have the merino this guy and then my insulation layer which is the kuyu teton insulation layer this thing is a rock star it's super comfortable super warm and as you know it's synthetic so if it gets wet it's not going to keep you freezing cold on my hands i have some very cheap fingerless wool gloves i switched to fingerless a, no a couple years ago and have never gone back these are like ten dollars. You can get you can get them like five or six bucks at a surplus store. I've tried every glove under the sun. I feel like tried them all, and by far in the summer, in the winter, in the snow, in the rain, fingerless wool gloves have always proven to be much warmer. Yes, your hands get a little bit, your fingers get a little bit chilly, but your fingers get chilly in normal gloves anyhow. So, what's the difference? And I have more dexterity with fingerless gloves. Dexterity. And I brought these guys some ski ski gloves. I had this image in my head of packing up a wet frozen tent or being really, really cold glassing. And boy, these things came in handy. On my neck, I had a Kuyu Merino neck gaiter. No big deal. And on my head, I had this red beanie. This I picked up at PCT Days in Cascade Locks and it is made by wool power this is a very heavyweight merino wool cap this thing is amazing rainwear kuyu teton line pants as well and on my legs i had kuyu gaiters uh, these things i i never leave home without them when it's when it's going to be raining or or walking through the brush and a sitka orange vest yes these are expensive but it's a material that's not going to soak up a ton of moisture it's got hand pockets it's got it's actually like a usable layer when you put it on which is what i don't like about most hunting vests so that was really nice it's always been really nice to have footwear i have these loas these guys i can't remember which ones these are it doesn't really matter caminos i have the loa caminos these are gore-tex i like the way they fit and i know that i'm a trail runner guy but it was november in the snow very cold out so i decided to go with the boot and it worked pretty good i still like having trail runners they're just so much better to move around in but that was that and last but not least i did bring a backup waterproof bag had it been raining really hard i would have put this in my bag and put all my gear inside it but it didn't rain and i didn't need it so i just stuffed it at the bottom of my bag and left it there in case i needed it hiking up all right that is it for what was in my pack. If you have any questions, hit me up on the website or in the comments below. Check out some other videos. Otherwise, we will see you next time. Thanks so much.